So um, Joanna is well known to many of you as the mammal discipline leader of the National Wildlife Management Center, which is part of the Animal and Plant Health Agency in York. Um, and she is known to us for her very important research in uh, developing non-lethal methods of gray squirrel control. Now, as you know, this is a subject which is extremely dear to the hearts of uh, members of the Royal Forestry Society. And um, as part of the funding for her research, uh, our membership has coughed up, I think north now of 45,000 pounds, which is a tremendous contribution. And we're extremely grateful to the response we've had to that. Uh, Giovanna is going to speak to us for about 20 minutes um, and then there will be an opportunity to ask questions. The questions you will have to please write in the function which calls itself Q&A and when the time comes I will then read um, as, uh, you know, as many questions as, as we have time for. I think we're looking to wrap up, I was looking at my watch, uh, you know, by two. So, um, but do keep the questions coming, if you like, during her talk so that we're well, well primed for um, when we have the opportunity to, to put the questions, which I will voice over to Giovanna. So Giovanna, the floor is yours. Thank you very much for coming. And we are looking forward to uh, being updated. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, James. C can everybody hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, you're fine. Very good. Okay, thank you. Just to check. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for inviting me here um, today. I'm going to start by reminding everybody about the main aims of the project, but then today I would mainly want to focus on the results so far. And I think the most important part of the talk today is to illustrate the complexity of this work, of this project, and why developing a contraceptive for mammals is taking so many people and so much time and so much effort to be developed. Um, and uh, once again, I would like to renew my thanks to the RFS and to the members for their fantastic contribution to this project. So if we have the next slide, please. The project is, uh, the, the title of the project is Developing and Delivering Oral Contraceptive for Gray Squirrels. It's a five-year project, one million, and uh, it's across three strands or three legs. The first one is the development of a contraceptive. Um, so we are aiming to find an oral contraceptive that is suitable for gray squirrels. The second part is equally important, even if we had a contraceptive ready tomorrow and ready for commercialization tomorrow, how on earth would we give it to 3 million squirrels, 2.5 million gray squirrels, which is not a small challenge. And then the third leg of the project is the model. We are modeling the, so we are using mathematical modeling to model the impact of culling or fertility control or culling and fertility control to reduce or eradicate uh, populations of gray squirrels. Today, I'll not have time to talk about the third part, but we've just published a study and I would be happy to send a copy of the study to anybody that is interested. The project uh, team is about 17 staff, six organizations, uh, several in the UK, one in the US and one in France. So there are also some logistic problems. And by the way, the five year have become six thanks to COVID, but we are on track as, um, as planned. Next, please. So broadly speaking, the project was organized uh, along five years. Uh, the work plan was um, initially to run lab trials with rats used as a model species to test oral contraceptives, then to monitor bait uptake by squirrels. And remember that when I say bait uptake, bait is the bait that will contain the contraceptive. 
then to move to lab trials, so trials in captivity uh, for gray squirrels, optimize bait uptake, how do we make sure that enough squirrels take enough bait, um, how do we make a bait palatable to squirrels, how do we make the bait attractive to squirrels, and then move to the field uh, in the last part of the project, and crucially also move to collect data so that the data can be used for the registration package that will be needed to register a veterinary medicine drug. Next, please. The challenges uh, are many or have been many and are still many. So if we start from the development, we started with a drug that we had used before. Um, it, was, it had been very successful. And is, is some of you will remember when we started Full of Hope, uh, after the first year, we could not repeat, replicate the initial results, which was a temporary hit to the project because we couldn't anticipate this to happen. So we need to identify a different drug that could be used as an oral contraceptive to test its effect and safety, to assess the longevity of effect, to test the dose and the frequency, and then to move from the model species, the laboratory rat, to the target species, the squirrel. And for this, we uh, built a captive colony of gray squirrels, and then we could test the effect of bait, the bait composition on the uptake of the vaccine. So this was for the development. For the delivery, we needed to design feeders and uh, appropriate bait. We need to assess local squirrel numbers. I'll tell you um, soon why. We needed to test individual and population bait uptake to know patterns of bait uptake so that we can optimize bait uptake and uh, contraceptive uptake by the squirrels. Uh, we needed to look at the factors, so affecting bait uptake. And we uh, wanted to run trials with volunteers, simply because volunteers are, are very keen, are, are very experienced, and also obviously working through volunteers cost the project much less than if we were running it ourselves. And in terms of modeling, we looked at fertility control versus culling. So we wanted to know where and when the two different strategies would work best and whether they would work in, in conjunction and also about different scenarios, for instance, urban versus rural uh, context. Next one, please. So if we start from the first leg of the project, developing oral contraceptives. As I said, um, some years ago with collaborators from the US, we had developed a oral, novel oral vaccine. The results were very good because it was the first time that somebody had produced a vaccine that made 60% of the animals dosed orally infertile. So we had 60% of our 10 rats, six out of 10 did not breed. However, if you think about how much one rat can breed, 40% fertile animals was still a lot. So the project was born to improve on the 60% and bring it up to 80 or 90%. And the idea was to test several candidates oral contraceptives. I will not have time to go through all the three of them. We have tested three different formulations of candidate oral contraceptives. One, uh, some are vaccines and some are not vaccines, but I'll talk about the one that we would like to take forward because it's the most exciting of them all in terms of potential effectiveness, particularly in the field. Next one, please. So this is a novel oral vaccine. We tested recently two formulations of this vaccine in rats in a pilot trial. And we looked at the antibodies to the vaccine. The antibody is the immune response, the response of the immune system to a vaccine. And the higher it is, the more likely it is for the vaccine to be effective. And in this case, for the vaccine to stop uh, fertility. And if you look at the right, size, so the, the dark green bars, each bar is one animal, and the red bar across is the, the tighter at or above which a rat will be infertile. So four out of five animals developed antibodies to the vaccine 
that are likely to make them infertile. So we have big hopes for, for this vaccine in particular, and we have just started a much larger trial with initially with the laboratory rats, where we will not only measure the antibody titers, but also their reproductive output, which would be the, the final proof that it works. At the same time, we will also conduct a small trial on our captive squirrels to look at the antibody titers. And we hope that the success in rats is translated across the success in um, squirrels. Next one, please. So we have a candidate oral contraceptive. Um, how do we go about feeding it to the squirrels? So we had uh, in the last few years, four main questions. Will most squirrel ingest contraceptive? Will individual squirrel ingest enough? Will contraceptive affect known target species? And what is the effort required for successful contraceptive delivery? Next one, please. So if we take the first question, uh, we in, in the slide on the left, in the picture on the left, you can see a, a metal tube, we call them hoppers, and these are um, developed to deliver bait to squirrels, to gray squirrels and gray squirrels only. They work very well with gray squirrels. Uh, we put some bait in that was a hazelnut paste and we added rhodamine B. Rhodamine B is a marker. If you ingest rhodamine B and then somebody look at your hair, your hair under UV light will look bright orange like on the other picture on the right. So we put bait with rhodamine B in many, many um, hoppers in several woods and we for four days and then we trapped and removed the squirrels and analyzed their hair. Next one, please. Uh, and these are the results. So three hoppers per hectare for four days. Uh, the each pie chart is one wood and the pink one is the proportion of squirrels that ate the bait. As you can see, summer looks much better than winter. However, remember that these were only four days of feeding bait. So we believe we can do better. We have some ideas on uh, how we could do better in winter, but certainly summer looks very promising to deliver the, the bait that will contain the contraceptive to the majority of squirrels. Next one, please. So how do we know how much a squirrel eats so that we can uh, tailor the dose? Uh, we, we use another method. If you go to a supermarket, you will see that every product that you buy has a barcode. Uh, so we can insert microchips in, in squirrels that have the same barcode. And when the squirrels enter these modified hoppers, the hopper will, will read the identity of the squirrel, the barcode, as if you were buying a squirrel. And, and so you will know that squirrel number 23 has visited that hopper a certain number of times. So we use the system to um, look at individual bait uptake by the squirrels. We had 51 squirrels microchipped in two woods. We know that 47 entered the hoppers. And then we know that the majority of squirrels made more than 80 visits to the hoppers in four days. And every time they, we also had the bait weighing device. So every time the squirrel took out some bait, we knew how much uh, the squirrel had eaten. So it was less than a gram per visit. So we have a better idea now on how much squirrels on average feed throughout the day. And that this will help optimize the um, dose of the contraceptive. Next one, please. Will contraceptive affect known target species? We are always asked these questions. Uh, so we use the same hoppers with the camera trap uh, and the access to the bait is protected by a metal uh, door that is about 70 grams, weighs about 70 grams. The hoppers are placed on one meter high stand and they are mo monitored by the remote camera. In at least 11 woods, we had in excess of 100,000 pictures of animals. 
Uh, you have all the animals there, hare, rabbits, pheasant, jay, small birds, deer, rat, mouse, badger, tony owl, dog, cat, fox, and wood pigeon. They lots of animals visited were seen around the, the hopper. Out of 100,000 photos, we have one uh, where one mouse uh, could eat the bait inside the hopper. And we also found, so, so there's no um, risk to non-target species, but we also found because the bait was bright pink, we could see the spillage and we saw that the spillage was minimal. And we, we did it intentionally because the paste is semi-solid, so it's very difficult for the squirrel to take it out of the hopper. They have to eat it inside the hopper, which is good because they will not make it available to other animals. Uh, next one, please. So these are some of the pictures uh, of animals around the hoppers. Um, so we have buzzard, uh, an owl, a badger sniffing, but as I said, none of these are oh, the, the mouse that fed from it, uh, but uh, none of these um, species, apart from the only instance of the mouse, could eat from inside uh, the bait hopper. Next one, please. Can we estimate the effort required for successful delivery of the contraceptive? So it makes sense if you go, if you are in wood and you want either to remove squirrels or to feed them contraceptive, it makes sense to know how many animals you're talking about or you're dealing with. So we used camera traps. We put some uh, bait on the ground and we developed an index of density. And then this was done in uh, a number of woodlands. And then, so on the graph, each dot is a woodland. And then we removed all the squirrels from the area. So we, we could relate the number of squirrels removed to an index uh, based on the camera trap. And we saw that there was a very good relationship between the two, a very strong relationship between the two. I think the best one was uh, an index estimated 69 squirrels in one wood, and they were with 76 trapped and removed. So we now have a good idea on how many animals are in a wood, and we are thinking about transferring this skill to people in, in the um, business, so to volunteer group, for instance, so that they can use this method to estimate the number of animals and the effort required to controlling this. Next one, please. So our questions, will most squirrels ingest contraceptive? Yes, if there are enough hoppers for squirrel. Will individual squirrels eat enough contraceptive? Most will have a repeated dose over time. Will contraceptive affect non-target species? No, but we have not looked at these in areas with red squirrels. So we are planning some trials for this summer in areas with red squirrels. And we have ideas on how to either test or um, it's mainly test whether red squirrels can uh, access the bait and to stop red squirrels from accessing the bait aimed at gray squirrels. And what is the effort required for successful contraceptive delivery? We now can reliably measure the density of squirrels in wood to deploy sufficient hoppers. Next one, please. So the future, where is this going? By the end of year three, which will uh, finish in September, this September, we would have tested the novel vaccine on reproduction in rats and on the immune response in gray squirrels. By the end of year four, so September 2022, we would have tested different doses and versus the duration of effect, the efficacy when delivered in different bait type. So if you want, year one to three was the proof of concept, year four to five, we would like to start the collection of data that will be used for a registration dossier. And then there will, the, the product will need to be registered for being used. Next one. My last but one slide is just a glimpse of year four. We'd also like to train volunteers in using the camera trap index. We'd like to test feeders in areas with red squirrels. We'd like to use the data from the volunteer to estimate the effort 
involved in, squ in squirrel control. And we would like to collect data through the volunteer on squirrel movements to estimate the spatial scale of contraceptive delivery. If you put the contraceptive in one part of the woodland, how many squirrels from other parts of the woodland will, will access that bait that will contain the contraceptive? Next one. So I would like to end this by thanking all of you for listening, by thanking the UK Squirrel Accord that has made a fantastic effort to raise the funding, maintain the awareness and, and keep this rolling, as well as DEFRA. I would like to thank many collaborators, landowners and volunteers that joined us, too many to, to be listed here. And special thanks to the RFS member for the tremendous effort and for their generous support towards this project. Thank you. The last point, if you, uh, on the Squirrel Accord website, there is um, frequently asked questions. So we have, I think the last count was maybe 21 questions. Uh, you're more than welcome to go on the website and, and check them. Uh, I'm here to answer other questions. And also my email is at the bottom in case you have some burning question tomorrow. Thank you very much. Right, uh, Giovanna, thank you very much indeed. And of course, um, we also will be putting uh, Giovanna's talk on our RFS website. Now, am I going to be able to find question and answer? Yes, we are, we've got one here. This is from Dominic Woodhouse. Is there a danger that stoats, weasels or pine martins could enter the hopper and eat the comprehend? contraceptive. I think you almost told us, but these aren't things that you mentioned in your, your talk, Joanna. Can you have a go at that? Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you for, for this question. I always forget the pine martins. So the, the weasel and the stoats, we have no evidence that that, that happened. Um, the, and we, we haven't seen it, so I, I don't think they will. The um, pine martin, we have not tested this in pine martin areas. So that was one of the aims of the project. And we are liaising with other researchers that work on pine martins to put intentionally the hoppers in areas with pine martins, obviously with the bait, without the contraceptive, to see whether pine martins can access it or not. Great, thank you very much. Now we've got another an anonymous question. Are there any lasting effects or infertility transference to a mammal that eats a gray squirrel that ingests the contraceptives, for example, a fox? Yeah, very good question too. Um, and the, the good news, because it's a vaccine, a vaccine is a protein, which means that it's degraded very quickly um, in the stomach. In fact, we, we are having one of the problems, one of the challenges is to make sure that it doesn't degrade before it acts on the squirrel. So we don't believe that there will be any effect on animals that feed on squirrels, but that's certainly one of the things that we will need to look into for the registration dossier. But my uh, understanding, even from the injectable vaccines, is that if, if you eat animals that have just been injected with a contraceptive vaccine, you will not become infertile. And we say that's a pity because if it wasn't like this, we would have had an oral contraceptive much sooner. Okay, thank you very much. Now, I think you've answered one of the questions I had, which is the, with a when. So we're looking probably in just over three years time possibility. I have various other things. Have you had any protests about your work from sort of animal rights type people or are you sufficiently under the radar? Uh, interesting question. Uh, so I am a member of uh, an international panel of experts uh, for, for a group that sits in the States and it's called Bot Steber Institute for Fertility Control in Wildlife, where we often talk about these issues too. Our problem is possibly the opposite. 
we, we want to manage people's expectation that we will have squirrels on the pill tomorrow. Uh, the majority of people, particularly in the animal welfare camp, love this idea, even, even too much, because we're not saying fertility control is the only method. It, it, the, our modeling suggests that an in, integrated with culling would be probably better, but in urban areas, you'll certainly not cull. So our problem is the opposite. We, we have uh, people over enthusiastic about it. Okay, thank you. Well, I'm pleased to report that I now live in an urban area and I'm culling. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the other thing which I, struck me as very counterintuitive was that there was far more hopper visiting in the, uh, the summer than the winter. Have you got any feeling for why that's the case? I, 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 yeah. I, I would have thought, you know, the winter was the time for anything that yeah. was connected to feed. Yeah, we, we would have thought so too, and in a way we would have preferred it because if you manage it right, because the peak of uh, reproduction is in winter, it would be better to give them a contraceptive just before then. We feel that it's due to, to a couple of reasons. One is uh, that in the day length is shorter in winter, so there will be, and, and squirrels are less active, so sometimes they'll not come out. And certainly with bad weather, we wouldn't trap, and, and volunteers will know this better than me, we wouldn't trap as many squirrels as in with good weather. But that's why everything is relative. So in winter, we that was only for four days. So we'd like to repeat some of these trials to see whether by extending the duration or by adding more uh, hoppers, we might increase the bait uptake. Otherwise we move to uh, summer and that, should also be fine. Okay, thank you. Um, I know it's a bit early to be asking this, but obviously one of the, the or, or literally probably the $64,000 question is, you know, is it going to cost so much that it's, that it sort of almost rules itself out for a lot of people? So what we've done, I've called it intentionally a vaccine without giving any detail because we are busy um, writing a memorandum of understanding be be between all the partners that uh, will have the intellectual property right to it. But having the intellectual property right is the first um, step on a long series of steps that will take a pharmaceutical company to produce it. If it was so expensive that it cannot be used, no pharmaceutical company will touch it. So. It definitely, we are aiming at something. We are also streamlining the process so, so that it's not that expensive. Otherwise, there wouldn't be any point in, in developing this. Yes, I mean, I think I also meant not just obviously the cost of the actual vaccine, but also the, the cost of implementing the program. You know, it's going to be yeah. quite expensive for, 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 for many people. So that's interesting too, because according to the model, a number of people that uh, cull will uh, use traps at least uh, for a week, once a month for nine months. So that's a lot of time put down to it. Uh, we believe that with a contraceptive, you should make uh, animals in, uh, infertile for certainly a number of months, if not years. So the cost in effort should be much, much lower, if that makes sense. I, I understand what, you, what you're saying is that you, you get much more bang for your buck in a sense, because you're not having to keep at, keep at it all the time as, as you are with culling. You, you do it and you've probably got, you know, maybe a year or so's uh, effect. Is that, is that Correct. Yeah, yeah, Co okay. Correct. There's also an, another element that, that's, that seems to become more and more important. Uh, there was a, a recent survey from Forest Research, I think it was, on what people wanted uh, as methods to manage uh, gray squirrels. And there's definitely, so the, the main method that everybody prefer is fertility control. So we believe that there would be many more people keen to put down contraceptive rather than people keen to kill. And that's only going to grow in the future. Sure. Okay, thank you very much. Now, we seem to be 
um, infected by technophobes here, so I'm not getting a lot of Q&A questions coming up. I wondered whether anyone else who's from the panel who's got access to a microphone would like to unmute themselves and ask a question. Um, because I'm sure, Rodney, I see your um, microphone coming off. Can I? I? I was sort of very intrigued, and I suppose it's part of the research. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Part of the research to come um, is how you could possibly design something that a red squirrel wouldn't activate or, or couldn't yeah. eat from, and a grey squirrel could. But uh, you know, you may not have, you know, may not have got there yet. So we have uh, three ideas about this. Um, one is the weight of the door. The, the, the red squirrels are roughly half the size of grey. So if we increase the weight of the door to access the bait, provided that the gray can still access, but the red cannot, so that would be one option and we'll test this. This would be relatively easy to test it. The second idea is a color sensor. So um, we're working with a company that produces these sensors that you can put on a um, hopper that will scan the color of an animal. And I know that some greys are reddish, uh, although the, the reds are not grey, if that makes sense. So the colour sensor might help us uh, or might help uh, one discriminate between the two species. And the last possibility is that if you look at the map of um, grey squirrels in the UK, the UK is grey with some little islands of red. So if none, nothing worked, we could simply use fertility control in areas where greys are there and greys only, not red. Okay, thank you very much. It's a very important point. Um, yes. I, I, I had a, a, a Ben, I think, has got a question. Ben. Um, what's the risk that if the contraceptive is successful, that the squirrels ultimately become resistant to it? So this is a question that comes up very often, whatever you use. So uh, in, for a number of years, we've had injectable immunoconceptives for a number of species. And this question recurs and it's a very good one. But we, my colleague and I always say um, it would be very interesting to see that happen because that would mean that we are already using it successfully. We would have used this successfully for a number of years. And I think if you use but they control possibly in combination with culling, you might certainly delay the possibility that resistance occurs. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Joanna. Thanks, Ben. Uh, Kitty, did you? I see uh, uh, your mic is off, on rather. No, I don't. I mis misread that. Um, I, I just had actually one question about sort of field scale research, which was, uh, do you know what I mean by a farmer cluster or a farm cluster where a number of group farms group together to do various types of, you know, wildlife and other work? And it struck me that if you, if you could find a sort of sensible one in a, a reasonably wooded area, they might make quite a good sort of field trial, real world um, uh, application. I don't know whether that's crossed your radar at all. Yes, yes, James, very much so. So we are we are now moving, and this is not only for squirrels, it's for a number of other uh, animals, uh, towards what we call coordinated control. Uh, and we are also using the modeling to tell us what is the proportion of an area that you should aim to cover to make a difference. So yes, uh, your example of class of farmers works perfectly well. Likewise, any landowner, you, if you have a map of an area and you have all the landowners, you need to have a certain number of landowners uh, or a certain amount of land available for it to make a difference at regional level. And that's certainly what we're looking at. We're looking also at some areas already with an eye to the future to, to do something uh, very similar to what you described. Good. Um, well, look, um, I think we've 
we have no more questions at the moment. So what I'm going to do is take this opportunity to thank you very much for your talk. It's a, it's such important work, and I think, uh, I think, and I probably wouldn't be alone in thinking. In my initial reaction when it first started was, you know, why couldn't we just have straightforward culling? But this must be the direction of travel, and um, as as I think you you, you said a, a couple of minutes ago yourself, you know, it's only going to get more so. Yeah. So we're extremely grateful for uh, all your hard work and for sharing your progress um, uh, uh, with us today. And we will be pestering you again. <laughs> so, <laughs> so many, many thanks indeed, Joanna. It's, it's been a, a, a real, um, real illuminating uh, talk. Thank you very, very much. A pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for listening. I know we have been, certainly. Absolutely. Thank you. OK, right. Well. I can't see you all out there, but I think really the moment has come to say goodbye to you. Um, and um, I'll just perhaps hang on to the, the panel and Claire for a moment so we can say goodbye to each other. But otherwise, thank you all very much for your attendance at today's AGM. <laughs>